morning and welcome to worship with the First United Church today on our Youth Celebration Sunday. My name is Angela Arpino and I serve as a Sunday school teacher as well as co-chair for the outreach ministry. If you are new to worshiping with us, please get in touch with us so we can help you get connected. The, co the contact information for our staff is on the church website. And our website also has information on our in-person worship and fellowship opportunities. Please contact the church office with any questions you might have. While you're on the website looking at all we have to offer here at First Church, we invite you to visit the, the giving tab and support the many ministries of this church. We hope youth and the young at heart will join us for our Vacation Bible Summer this summer as we learn about loving kindness and what it means to have compassion. Visit the website for dates and to sign up. Stay tuned for additional opportunities specifically for adults. Sign up on the website if you are also interested in our new summer program for caregivers and little, little ones three and under. Our first gathering was yesterday and our next one will be on Monday the 21st. Please contact Kelsey DiCarlo for information. We have an awesome group of kids here at this church who make sharing scripture and Jesus's lessons so fun and interesting. I'm a Sunday school teacher, like I mentioned, and I've been teaching for two years, the first year with the sixth and seventh graders, because my nephew Cooper was in the class, and this year with the pre-K to second graders. They always have new and terrific responses to questions in our classes, and they share their faith and ideas about being a good person with smiles and honesty. Reaffirming the fact that God has their back, and that is something they can count on throughout their whole lives, especially during challenging times, is an invaluable gift they receive at Sunday school. Please prayerfully consider becoming a Sunday school teacher. Kelsey and the Faith Formation team make it so easy, really. I was given lesson plans in their curriculum that had millions of ideas and options for discussions and activities, making preparation very, very easy. Each lesson also comes with a background and information for the teacher, so you'll be well-versed in the subject matter and feel very comfortable teaching it. Oh, and the best bonus for you is that you'll deepen your own faith and knowledge of scripture. It's a win-win for everyone. Also, I had a co-teacher each year, uh, Sue DeMantis, and that was the first year, and Bill Catt this year. Bill's expertise with Zoom and young children was terrific, and Sue and I were able to take turns teaching each Sunday. We can have a vibrant Sunday school program and engaging youth ministries only if we have people like you share your faith and time with the next generation of learners. The more volunteers we have, the easier it is for each teacher and advisor in the program. Kelsey would be happy to answer your questions and help you discern your call to this ministry. No pressure, just information, she promises. Call her at the church office and experience this fun and educational adventure in the fall. This coming year, we are embracing our creativity and would like to call all artists to prayerfully consider how you might engage in the church this coming year. Whether your artistic medium is singing, painting, planting, textiles, dancing, or something else entirely, we invite you to reach out to a staff member. Thank you to our worship participants this week. We share Christ's peace with you as we greet those near and far, in person and virtually. Peace. Greetings from JPF. Ready? As we gather together, we celebrate our youth. We rejoice! We celebrate our youth examples of God's love. We rejoice! We praise God for our time together. We rejoice!
He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the itty bitty baby in his hands. He's got the itty bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the itty bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got everybody here. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Please join in our unison prayer of invocation based on a prayer written by Confirmation One. Dear God, we gather together and thank you for a good year of learning and growing in our faith through Sunday school, youth groups, and confirmation. Help us understand that faith is what we make of it. Thank you for trusting us to make our own decisions. May we be good people and stay devoted to faith. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The mustard seed is tiny, but has so much possibility in how it will grow. That is true for each of us. We are gifts of God. Sometimes we feel small, but we hold the promise of God's power at work within us. The youth of our church are the present and the future, and we share our gifts now for that present and that future. We share these gifts to build a home for those who come here seeking refuge, acceptance, and love. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. life a little easier for someone who is suffering, that they will strengthen our faith in you, and that we may never forget your love for your people. In Christ's name we pray, amen. The parable of the growing seed. Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on, on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. Again, Jesus said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. 
with many parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as he they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Okay, so those two parables, what is happening in them? Cece. In the second parable, it's like about a mustard seed and how tiny it is, but then it grows like a lot of it and like till like birds could perch on the tree branches. Yeah, so something really, really small grows really, really big. And then in the first one, what else is there in it? Like what's in it? Not even what happens, but what's in it. Planting a seed. Yeah. So we've got this one seed throughout. Different seeds, but like this one thing that's constant throughout. So in the first parable, Jesus is the sower. That's somebody who plants, right? It's S-O-W-E-R. Um, and the sower it's somebody who plants. And in this story, it's anybody who plants or spreads the gospel, right? So the word of God, because you can't just know something, you have to learn it somehow. The parable of the sower describes how people respond to Jesus's teaching. It's the teacher's responsibility to teach, to scatter the seed, but the teacher can't force anybody to accept the message or to allow it to make changes in their lives. Just like, you know, a farmer can't say, you soil are going to grow this plant because I said so, unless you've got the right conditions, right? You need the right soil, you need the right amount of water, sunlight, all of that. His point in this is that you need people to be ready to hear the word of God. In the second one, in the beginning, the kingdom of God, God's people, there's only a few, it's tiny, it's little, it's itty bitty, it's the mustard seed, right? To the point where it seems insignificant, it seems like it doesn't matter. Hardly anybody notices. Just like people don't pay attention to the mustard seed, but then it grows and grows and grows and grows because, because people spread the word of God. They talk about it. They share what they know, they share what they believe. So now here we get to our discussion. Everybody ready? What have you been part of that was small to begin and then grew big? Alex. My family was me, just me and Isaac and my mom, and then there was Owen, and then there was Annalyn. Awesome example. Cece, what do you have? At school, because of COVID, people did Google Meets, and then the classroom, after April break, people started coming in. So we got everyone in our class now. Amazing. Other examples of things that started off really small and grew big? Cooper. On um, my basketball team, we had like six players in our first game, and then the second game after we won, uh, or after um, the second game, more players showed up. Awesome, Isaac. The world and how we buildings. Yeah. Have any of you ever planted a garden? Yeah. Kayla, what's your favorite plant to plant? Flowers. Okay. And how, how do you plant them? Do you like to plant seeds or do you like to plant bulbs? Seeds. Okay. And what happens? It grows. So like that's a, that's a very tangible example of something that starts really, really small and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's very literal to the story, but it works, right? 
Cece. I have berry garden and I planted this plant and it grew like over one night, but it still has to get the flowers to it. But like the buds started blooming and I was like, wow, that grew fast because it like bloomed overnight. Awesome. Alex and Isaac. One time we had this tiny sunflower seed and then it grew like so tall. It was like as tall as my dad and he's like six foot one, I think. And it was huge. Isaac, was that what you were thinking of as well? Cool. So the church, when it just started out, it just had Jesus. And then he started talking to people and sharing God's word, and there were followers that started to follow him, his disciples and other people as well. As they heard what he was teaching them, that number grew. So my question for all of you, and there's not really a right answer to this, this is what you think. How do you think that we can grow the church now where Jesus isn't here to teach? What does that look like? Cece? We have Sunday, we have Sunday school. Amazing. Alex? Even though it was COVID, we like did Google Meets and stuff. Yeah, we still kept meeting. It wasn't something that we stopped, we kept going. Any other ideas how we grow the number of people who know what we believe. Cece. Having like fun lessons and stuff, and like spreading it to other people. Yeah, and like doing things where you like you share with your friends what you learned, right? Like you know, like things start really small and they grow really big. Like that's something you can, that's a conversation you can have with anybody, right? Isaac. I was going to say you share what you did with your friends and family. Oh, I like that last one. Your friends, but your family too. Because do adults know everything? No. Do adults sometimes think they know everything? But you all are the ones that are in Sunday school, right? You're the ones that are actively learning and being really active and part of studying the Bible. So you may have knowledge of something that your parents may have forgotten or they may not have read for a while. And so if you like take what you hear in a lesson or what you learn and like what you come up with from a lesson and share it with an adult in your life, like that's part of spreading God's word and it's part of being a teacher. So from these stories, what do you take away from it? When we hang up the meat, what, do, what are you gonna take away from it? Isaac and then Alex. The people and God's always good. Amazing. Alex, go for it. Something really small can grow and be really big. Cece and Cooper, you agree? Any other takeaways or things that you think you're going to walk away with? Alex? I want to grow a garden again. I love it. I love it. Cece? I need to check on my fairy garden. Ooh. When you do, send a photo, okay? What do you hope that the people who are hearing this conversation in our June 13th um, service, what do you hope that they take away from it? Cece and Cooper, go for it. To learn that like small things could grow big. Um, to learn that even small things in life can seem big to some people, even if they are small. Yeah, I like, like that. Like that it's all about your perspective, right? Any other takeaways that you want people to learn?
Alex. Even if you are small, you can still grow and be big. Yeah. We hold up our joys and concerns as we come to this time of prayer. Some prayers we have for heading into the summer include those for our family and friends to stay healthy, that we would enjoy lots of beach and pool time, and that many of us would have great camp and vacation experiences. We lift up people who need our prayers. We remember Rita and Evelyn, Dolly and Dawn, Frank and Bill, Ruth and Jean, students and educators, and all of those traveling. We also hold up those who have passed and their family and friends who mourn. We remember the passing of Mike Lucas, the passing of Mary Rose Hankey, that's Letty Corrado's mom, the passing of Carol Muglin, Jack Ayer's sister, and the passing of Lindsay. What joys and concerns do you bring to our time of prayer? Dear God, we ask that you continue to grow the mustard seed of faith in each of us. Help us to act on our hopes in the coming months as we approach normalcy again. As we look toward gathering with one another for picnics, parties, and vacations, remind us of the importance of fellowship for our neighbors and ourselves. As we look toward our futures filled with new beginnings and familiar happenings, guide us as you always have. We ask that you keep everyone safe through the summer fun. Amen. Part of our Youth Celebration Sunday includes presenting a student Bible to each of the seventh graders of our church to read and to study in light as well as in confirmation in eighth and ninth grade. The seventh graders in our first church community this year include Cooper, Zach, Joey, Clara, Peter, Callie, Hunter, Jack, Hannah, Sunny, and Sophia. We celebrate each and every one of them and their involvement with First Church throughout the years, from Sunday school to JPF, volunteering and beyond. So much of this year has been different, but one constant for us has been our Sunday school teachers. On behalf of the Sunday school youth, I want to say a big thank you to Miss Angela, Mr. Bill, Miss Margie, and Miss Morgan for all their time and dedication. They have guided us through this year sharing lessons from the Bible and from their experiences. On behalf of Senior PF, Thank you, Michelle, Pete, Jasmine, Craig, and Ashley for contributing to so many memories for the past few years. Some of our favorite memories of this year were the fall cleanup a campfire with alums at Christmas. The cannon bottle, almost climbing at the adventure park, many mission trips, and our year-end gathering. On behalf of JTF, we thank you and thank you for the We'll never forget last night's had Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for these teachers and advisors at First Church. Thank you for your congregation su supporting those who minister in your name. May the May their faith in you grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn. Just for you.
As we depart this place, O oh God, we pray to know you and to know that through you all is possible. Amen. <laughs>